valued viewers. I hope you're all doing very well. And just a quick reminder that if you would like to support the channel's efforts, the super thanks button is on the taskbar close to the like button. And if you want to contribute in any way, please do. And it's greatly appreciated. And with that, today's video is the Baltimore and Ohio's George H. Emerson 5600 Class N1. Enjoy. The Baltimore and Ohio Railroad was one of those railroads that was always at the forefront of the latest steam technology or trying to constantly improve its locomotives. It put the first articulated Malay into service in 1904, for instance, which was the 0660 um, Old Maud locomotive, and then it developed the first duplex drive during June of 1937. And the idea behind the duplex drive system concept was to further advance steam technology, perhaps as the next generation to enter service. At this time, the diesel locomotive was only starting to be accepted by the industry as a reliable form of motive power. However, it remained limited primarily to switching in secondary roles as road power like the American Locomotive Company's RS1, which was the first road switcher, and Electromotive's revolutionary FT cab model were still a few years away. And so, the B&O Railroad constructed the duplex drive at its Mount Clare shops in Baltimore, which were well known for its ability to turn not only innovative locomotives, but also classic designs like their beautiful Class P uh, 462 Pacifics and Class T 482 Mountains. The B&O Railroad's Chief of Motor Power, George Emerson, who was credited with many of the company's successful applications of steam during the 20th century, came up with this new innovative design. The new locomotive design carried a 4444 wheel arrangement. So, for further context, if we were to compare the new duplex design here to a standard locomotive, it would be a design using a primary rod and a single set of cylinders. It would have been a 484 Northern type. So, if you wanted to convert this uh, duplex drive, it, it would convert to a 484. I hope that makes some sense to you. So the new duplex locomotive was numbered 5600, was given class N1, and it was also named the George H. Emerson for his many contributions to the company since the 1920s. Okay, so side note, you never name a design or experimental after yourself because that right there just doomed you for failure versus karma. And no joke, this is the very reason why the U.S. Navy doesn't want to name a warship the United States. And if you want further proof of that, see the Cleveland Browns NFL football team. Okay, so back to the story. The 5600 was clad in semi-streamlining and looks similar to something an English designer would come up with. The basic premise behind the concept was to develop a more powerful, rigid frame locomotive that used two sets of power drivers instead of one. And as the theory goes, it's supposed to reduce maintenance since it used lighter and smaller main rods, which had a total of four in all. And unlike the Pennsylvania Railroad, which advanced the design further than any other company and is most often associated with the duplex drive, the B&O's approach was a bit different by locating the back set of cylinders nearest the cab and under the firebox behind the rear drivers. And as it turned out, this arrangement was one of the locomotive's glaring issues amongst many others. By placing the cylinders under the firebox, they had a tendency to overheat as well as collect dirt and dust. Another innovation by Emerson was that he installed his self-designed water tube firebox, which he had been testing since 1930 on the Class T-1482. The idea behind this special firebox was that it held a greater heating surface to the surrounding fire. And I can see why Emerson wanted to attempt to use this in his new 5600 design because according to SteamLocomotive.com, the Class T1 uh, which had this water tube uh, technology installed in it offered an 82% increase of surface area within the firebox and that also included the 83 square feet of arch tubes. So other features in this new 5600 locomotive included a extremely high 350 pounds of boiler pressure, 76 inch main drivers, wall shears valve gears, and an 18 by 26 and a half cylinders. And all four of these cylinders were integrally casted and that was the first of their kind. And also the 5600 weighed 391,550 pounds and it offered 65,000 pounds of tractive, tractive effort. So you might be thinking that that tractive effort doesn't seem very impressive or not 
you know, very good at all. But the purpose of the locomotive as the B&O intended it was to be used in passenger service where that kind of tractive effort is normal or nominal. And while the Emerson uh, locomotive was being used, that's where it was deployed at in passenger service. And unfortunately for Emerson and the b &O Railroad, numerous issues in the advancement of the diesel doomed the locomotive. The Emerson firebox proved problematic with vibration issues and it was not sufficiently insulated. In general, it never offered significant advantages over a standard firebox. And if that wasn't enough, the locomotive experienced problems related to its bearings that constantly kept it sidelined. Perhaps in time the B&O could have ironed out many of these setbacks, but interest in steam was waning as diesels proved that they were capable of mainline power. So, as a concept, the George H. Emerson 5600 locomotive held a lot of promise. Aside from the intended advantages already mentioned, its smaller and lighter main rods meant fewer counterbalance weights were needed and a short wheelbase would have allowed it to operate all across the B&O VAS system. In service, the 5600 was given mixed, re mixed reviews by the crews that operated her. In general, the locomotive offered a good ride but had a tendency to slip. It would not always stop precisely. And as the problems mounted with the 5600, it mostly sat in storage from the early 1940s until 1950 when it was finally scrapped in October of 1950. Perhaps the most unfortunate is that the B&O did not preserve this unique locomotive since it was an experimental and a railroad often sent such interesting creations to its museum in Baltimore. And many of you have been watching my videos for a while now so this is a common theme with classic or experimental locomotives they just don't get saved for whatever reasons and this particular locomotive might have been a good one for the smithsonian just for an innovation point of view so anyhow that didn't happen the thing was scrapped and on we go but i will say this for the baltimore and ohio at least they only built one of the uh, of the thing and not a fleet of 30 like some other railroads we know and with that the following specifications apply to the baltimore and ohio's Duplex 4444 Class N1 locomotive called D. George H. Emerson, number 5600. So the locomotive was built in 1937. The length of the locomotive was 117 uh, feet and a quarter inches. The locomotive's weight was 386,500 pounds. The tender's weight was 350,000 pounds for a total combined weight of 736,500 pounds. The lead bogey wheels were 36 inches, the main driver size was 76 inches, and the trailing truck wheels uh, were 42 inches in diameter. The adhesive weight over the main drivers is 238,000 pounds. The fuel type, of course, was coal. The fuel capacity is 46,000 pounds. The water capacity was 22,000 U.S. gallons. The firebox had a grid area of 80.5 square feet. The boiler pressure was 350 uh, PSI. The heating surface was 4,897 square feet. The tubes and flues were 4,220 square feet and the superheater was 677 square feet and a total heating area of 1312 square feet the cylinders were four duplex and the cylinder sizes were 18 inches by 26 and a half inches the valve, valve gear they used was wall shirts the power output was 3,936 horsepower at the cylinders. The tractive effort was 65,000 and the factor of adhesion was a very iffy 3.66. And the class was N1. And with that, I shall wrap up the video. I shall thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed the content, please leave a like. And also, if you've not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button as the like and subscribe button help my channel grow immensely. And don't forget, if you want to support the channel, you can use the super thanks button uh, next to the like button. Or if you don't want to do that, you can visit our uh, print shop at Nickel Plate Limited on Etsy.com. And we thank you once again.